Hey, I'm Guy. I'm John. It's our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it. Give this video a like. Yep. Podcast below in the description. Also, visit our friends at wineaccess.com slash ham where you get 20% off one bottle, 100 bottles, $15 bottles, $300 bottles. Great selection. Satisfaction guarantee. Wineaccess.com slash ham. Go send a gift to someone. Do something nice today. Wineaccess.com slash ham. I just saw this tweet from uh, Vic Tafer. Okay. Take a look at this. This says, Mike Mayock just said there's been a lot of lively conversations in the building on where the Raiders stand with drafting players who opted out last season. Mike Mayock said there's been a lot of lively conversations in the building on, the, on where the Raiders stand with drafting players who opted out last season. I, I know which side of the lively conversation I'd be, I'd be on. I, I think it's kind of a waste to have a lively conversation about it. You're telling me you would, not, you would like Panay Sewell less or Jamar Chase less because they opted out? That seems crazy but I don't think me. he's ta- but I, but I don't think he's talking about a lot of different players opted out. Like I, I think not everyone's in the same conversation. I bet when different names come up, we have different conversations. He's not. They're not drafting Panay Sewell. They're, they're, I understand, but if, but we do out. have to under we do have to if we're gonna give one guy a pass for it. Pass air quotes. We do have to understand everybody's circumstances were kind of crazy then. Like I give guys well, the benefit no. of the doubt. I, I give guys the benefit of the doubt if they opted out. I don't think they're not competitors if they opted out. Well, to me, but this is where I'm pushing back. I don't think they're arguing over Jamar Chase. But but I'm I'm just saying if I'm giving Jamar Chase a break, why am I not giving a third round pick a break about it? Because I don't treat we don't treat everyone the same. That's not the way the world works. Of course not. Of course, we don't treat everybody the same. But if I can look at Jamar Chase and go, I don't think Jamar Chase doesn't like competing. I don't think that about him. But a third rounder, I think that guy doesn't like competing. Because I don't think you were good enough to opt out. Yeah, that but it's all about what, what, what. But but again, if you draft me in the fifth round, and I was, or you draft me in the third round, let's talk, let's say, let's say we're talking about a third round pick. You draft me in the third round, I opted out. In my mind, I might go, "Good thing I opted out. I could have broken my leg. I was just a third round pick." Or if, what if you would have competed and became a top forty pick? Yeah, maybe I could have. But I, but again, you just drafted me in the third round, so I. If you think I could have been a top 40 pick if I had stayed in, that's great. But I know right now I was a third-round pick because I didn't tear my ACL this year. But maybe Mayock's uh, saying it was like I, we wouldn't fuck with third-round guys. Obviously, if Panay Sewell or Jamar Chase fell to us 17, we take them. But, like, the guys in the – in the, and I, I don't know the list of guys that opted out. I only know about the top guys, but it does feel that there were more around the country that a mid-round guy I'm not going to feel comfortable taking if they didn't play. Because I'm just saying that could be their argument just because like, who are you opt out? Like for what? You're well, not I mean, here's opt- an example, like Panay Sewell, Tre- Jack, I, I'm not Trevor using, Lawrence played. I'm not using Panay Sewell as an example. I'm just giving you a time, an example of a timeline. Panay Sewell opted out on September 7th. The PAC 12 announced it was coming back to play football like three weeks after that. Yeah. No, so but no I don't think I'm he's not talking, talking about, Panay about Panay Sewell. I'm saying if, there's an example of just how it worked in the Pac-12. You could have opted out in September, and then three weeks later they said they're playing. You moved everything yeah, I mean, out, of your, why, out of your out of These are lively apartment. discussions. Like, are, you got to have these discussions. Yeah. So, I, but the idea that like I would say a guy opted out, so he must be he must not be a competitor. Like, I can't as a blanket statement say that about anybody, whether they're yeah, a third round pick we, or a fifth round pick or a first round pick. But I just think we have to have the conversation on every individual separately. If you're just having a blanket discussion, I would agree with you. That's stupid. But if every individual, to me, is not getting judged the same. No one blamed Jamar Chase. Not a fucking soul. There, But I, I don't know these other players. But if there's a player like a third, fourth round guy based on 19, and he just tapped out, and they're like, yeah. You know, at like LSU, we're like, I don't know why this guy left. We're like, what are you doing, man? We're playing. And he just stopped. Like, maybe you have to judge that guy differently. Maybe, but I, but I would say I would give my point is I would give all of those guys the benefit of the doubt that it's not that they're not just they don't like competing because the situation was pretty fucked. Right. Especially at the beginning when you had to make the decision. It was like to me, that's different than a regular year and you walk away in the middle of the year. And even then there's circumstances. To- totally agree. But I but I think we have enough evidence like a lot of people played <laughs> like a lot of the draftable. Again, I, I, I give the elite guys. I don't worry about them. There were some guys, I think J.C. Horn is an example, of like three or four games in, once his team sucked, he tapped out. Don't blame him either. Like, we ain't going to a bowl game, he left. I think that happened with the Mississippi State guy. 
I just think you treat this like you would any instance with any individual player. You have the conversation in a vacuum with that guy. I think that's the way that's what you fair. Would do. I don't. Th- I, I haven't heard one person go Panay Sewell. I'm just using him as an example. That's never come up one conversation or anything I've read. Jamar Chase either. But I think there are other individuals that are going to get judged more harshly when you're an average guy. Yeah. Well, look, if you because there were some players that came back right in the Pac-12. Yeah, absolutely. There were some guys that came back. There were some guys that opted out and then came back and then opted out again when it when it got when it got pushed back. Like I'm just saying, the yeah. players were getting kind of swung all over the place. If you go, what? what I don't want to. I don't even live here. I got to go back over there. Is school going to start? School's going to start before they've announced that we're coming back. So I got to go go to school for two months, but then we might not play. So then I'm going to leave. Yeah, I'm but just this is what I'm saying. It. Like the the Pac-12 guy is a different discussion than the SEC guy when they were always playing the full schedule or the ACC or the uh, Big 12, right? Their, their timelines were different. I, these are just conversations. Their timelines were different, were but I, I'm just saying as a baseline, I'm not judging those guys any differently based on just what the year was. That's all. That's what I just think. I, I, I think it would depend on what you're told from the program. Like what if, what if the guy's like, you know, Billy – I'm just using random guy. Again, I don't have the list Thank you for of these guys. The, the, the only one that we know, or at least the the casual fan listening to this knows, are the top guys that opted out. But there were clearly a ton more. Right. What if I told you Oklahoma had this guy, and he was like a mid-round pick, and, and Lincoln's like, you know, I, we didn't even think he liked football anyway. Every the other guys were like, bro, you should play. We're playing. His roommates were playing. He's like, yeah, I'm kind of over it. And he just left. Like, what if you get – Information can change from guy sure, to guy. Sure, but you get that. You get they, they could have said that about him if he had played. That we don't think he really likes football that much, and right, like they might have. Well, I mean that if you've been me, in the program the for lively, two years, but that's part of the lively discussion. You might like the player, and then they're telling you like this guy opted out, and he didn't opt out because he was scared of Corona. He just quit because he fucking doesn't like football. Well, like I just think these are lively discussions. That's but to me that's like that's a conversation just about the guy that you would have had about him. They formed that opinion over the previous two years when he did play football. That's what I'm saying. But, you but that's got- the way I that's the way I read that quote. But now, and listen, I think in defense of what you're saying, there are going to be old school coaches, and and probably scouts too, and I would call these guys negative Nancys, glass half empty type guys that are immediately going to hate that guy, which is fine. But okay, that's, that's that's isn't that the way society works? Most people just have blanket thoughts in their head that are wrong. Naturally, sure. that's just that's human nature. Yeah, and I'm saying I think you have you have a greater potential to miss if you th- look at these guys that way than if you Kevin Colbert don't. told Kevin Clark, the GM of the Steelers, who I think we all acknowledge is a top two or three general manager in the league, we will we will lean with the guys that played this year over yeah. the guys that opted out. He yeah. said that was that before the season, if I remember ago. correctly. Yeah. I, it, now, part of that could be we have more recent. Like, I, if you're saying I got tape right now on this guy as opposed to a guy, okay, that's different to me. If you're saying I've got tape on these guys that's not a year old, then that's legitimate. I'm not talking about that. Yeah. Well, the tape is kind of your currency to evaluate. Like, that is your information, right? That's a huge part of it. So you, when you miss it, it throws people off. And then when you factor in everyone's story is going to be a little different – that I, I think it's just if you're not having lively discussions over this. I don't know what it, you know. It's just you're just having lively discussions about players. I, I think that's just part of an element. And I, I would imagine Gruden and they probably have some coaches on that staff who are a little more old school. Yeah, I, it I, might just be the head coach, right? I, I read this. There have been a lot of lively discussions in the building about where they stand on drafting players who opted out last season. You're right. That could definitely be like we've just had a bunch of individual players. We've gone back and forth on all of them. I read that as like, hey, do we want to draft anybody that opted out last year? But you're right. Maybe it's that's yeah. how I read it. I, I, didn't, I didn't read it that way. But I also think like the headliners, they ain't getting them, right? If, if you told me like, I guess they Panay Sewell could be the right tackle. Let's just say he tumbled to him and they passed on Panay Sewell and it came out. Mike was like, we weren't comfortable because he opted out. I would be in complete agreement. That's the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard. But that, that's not going to happen. Now, I do think fairly – one of the corners fairly, I think, has a bad back. Horn, I think, opted out midseason. When, when, he was a South Carolina guy, right? And yeah, their Horn, season yeah. was a disaster. Their coach ended up getting fired. 
if like he was there and people were like, God, this is incredible value. And then they didn't take him. They're like, he opted out mid season. I'd be like, come on guys. Are you serious? Like I, that to me, I'd say JC Horn of all the opt outs. Like he showed up, he played. And then once the season was going to hell, his coach was a dead man walking. He's like, guys, I'm out. I cannot afford to, to me. Took I'd you say as far he as I has could. the most validity. Him. I'd even say Jamar, too, because it was like the moment Joe Burrow left and he was justified quick when they lost their opening game to Mississippi State. Panay, it's like, you know, his brother was there, but I get it. Like the, the Pac-12 got was the ultimate yo-yo and they just followed the Big Ten. Like that was a little more complicated. But I don't think anyone's judging him. I don't think anyone's yeah, judging I, him. I'd be, I'd be interested if up. anybody has. Because the, if anybody the moved Because the other, you, the you problem... can't act like, Go ahead. You can't act like like opting out. Like a lot of guys played, and these guys are all getting drafted. Like right. Devonte Smith, Jalen Waddle, Beck Jones. Obviously, he's a bad example. Trevor Lawrence, Najee Harris, Etn. Like all these NFL players coming into the season. Like I'm fucking in. Right. So it is understandable where it's like, well, Travis Etn didn't tap out, right? Or whoever you like. Yeah, I, again, I, did not again, I think there's all these circumstances. My ultimate point, I have not for a second held it against any of those guys. Going, I don't know what I, these guys. I, I know my team. It's great if you believe your team and I'm here with my guys. That's great. But if I'm a player, I also know why we're doing this whole thing. And if I don't want to be a part of that, then I'm not. Like, I, I get that. Now, the irony is for the tackles, didn't Slater opt out? Did Slater play this year? Or did he opt out also? I don't I think he opted out too. So like, but, I, but I don't. I'm not. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think I'm the conversation. I'm not going back down that road. I'm just pointing out that if you have a problem with it and you need a tackle, <laughs> you're in a tough spot. If you're at the top of the. Draft. I do think this conversation is going to be interesting because there are going to be a lot of guys, and this just naturally happens. Once the second round starts, a lot of guys get drafted that the casual fan doesn't know. Then there will be names that like this guy didn't play this year in the second, third, fourth rounds. Much more interesting than like. Like Panay Sewell, Jamar Chase, Horn, like all these guys are going to go in the top 20. Yeah. You're right, though. Like if the Raiders, if one of these guys are falling, that would be interesting. If if it comes out, a guy went, goes, Panay Sewell goes 16 instead of 6, and it goes, well, he opted out, or Slater, but it doesn't feel like that's going to no, be the case. Right, it doesn't. Sway said, ask on, on YouTube, here's a YouTube comment, did opting out of a bowl game hurt players? I mean, McCaffrey opted out of the bowl game, right? I don't, didn't, I don't think opting out of bowl games hurts anybody. No, yeah, Slater didn't play. I do, I do give you credit. Listen, Christian McCaffrey is a high character stud. He opted out of the bowl game and then he didn't go. I do like when a guy opts out of the bowl game and it just goes with his team. Right. Like that does. Like those are your friends. Nikhil Harry I mean, did that. they're your roommates. Yeah, it's just Nikhil Harry opted like, out of the go. Who they play? They play SC. They played at the. Uh, they played in the Vegas. Vegas bowl. Well, they yeah. played first. And he State. was on the sideline. I think. Yeah. Didn't they? Yeah, they did. Yeah, he was there. I, I like it when a guy goes to the bowl game. Feels like every Alabama guy does that. Like comes back. Yeah. I mean, not opts out and then comes back. Like plays. And if if it not, then feel, it's there. The Bama guys, I don't think, are big on opting out. <laughs> no, it's really incredible. I mean, Waddle opted in when everyone's like, "Bro, stay out." Came back from injury. Um, are right, you want to get to some uh, uh, YouTube's? Keith says. Opting out after your team isn't playing well is a negative. Just walking away from your teammates midseason. I mean, obviously, if you get hurt, too, like that was the Nick Bosa deal, right? Bosa yeah. got hurt and then left again. But I think I, I think, I think I Horn play. is the best example of a guy that was on a really shitty team whose coach was literally getting fired, and he's like, what are we doing here? But he started. I, I actually think he gets extra credit. Like, you know, this guy For showed try. up. Yeah, well, but I'm saying showed up. He the only reason he left. Like to me, he gets. It'd be different if he just didn't play the whole season. He showed up. It was so shitty. He didn't bounce. Uh, Michael says. Carl Pitts. Just... I mean, a, I, I just think a lot of top end guys though did play and then stuck it out. Maybe Pitts. I guess some of them didn't play in the bowl game. Uh, to me, a bowl game's on a whole other level, especially if it's not a yeah. major. Uh, aren't they just saying they are torn because there isn't that much tape on guys that opted out? I mean, that could be what the point Mayock is making is I, my impression was, was more about a question of football character, but there is a fair point to be made about the film 